If I have sports, man, it's Lamont. We back with another pot McCast video, man. And I just wanted to, I just wanted to bring y'all this video right here because it was more of a, you know, when I saw this video, it was just more of a wanted a message of positivity. Um, I know we just did a live stream about the the untimely track passing of of King Von, a rapper out of Chicago, you know, who was definitely up and coming and on the rise. So then I just wanted to come back with a more positive message because, you know. We touched on a lot of things in our live stream, some of the struggles of coming out the hood and changing your life. And I just think this video is just not just a good example of how to change your life, but it also correlates to I can correlate it to basketball as well. So um, before we before we get into that, um, make sure you guys like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already. We grinding. The channel is growing. All right. Growing faster than I imagine. I mean, you got, and it's all because of you guys supporting the video, sharing the videos, engaging in the live chats, all of that stuff, man, has been helping the channel grow like crazy. So you guys keep it up. I'm going to continue with the content. We're going to continue with the giveaways. We're going to keep it going over here at FYF Sports. Uh, but like I said today, man, this is more of a message of positivity. Um, now, the video today, um, as you can see from the title, um, it's, it's just a message from, uh, you know, we all know this guy. His name is John Gabbana. Um, or more famously known as, as Boom Gang. Um, just like I said, you guys know the crazy videos of him, you know, snatching stuff out of stores, stealing stuff, running, stealing, getting locked up, getting, you know, going into interviews high on drugs. I mean, this man, you know, over the last, I would say, three, four years, I mean, it, his life has been crazy. I mean, and and now to see, you know, to him come out with this type of message right here, um, you know, one of the things we spoke about in that live chat when we were speaking about King Von, when we were speaking about how hard it is for some of these guys to come out of these impoverished neighborhoods and actually change their lives and turn away from some of the craziness they've, that they've dealt with in some of these hoods. And this is a, a prime example of how you grow. Um, and I think it comes from within. This is not something that you have to learn or teach, even if you grow up in some of the craziest environments. I think just our human nature um, invites us to change and, and grow up and, and become better. And I think he's he's grew up. He's allowed himself to change and be better. But I want we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play his message. Um, and the and one of the you know like I said, not just with life. I like to correlate this to basketball as well. Um, and, and I think his message, the way he's grown, like his his development from being boot gang, from being that guy. That we always wanted to see in those viral videos to now I, I think that can correlate to you know when we have those debates about basketball about how 90s basketball used to be um and, and how it's changed um maybe not so for for our for what we want to see but it's changed for the betterment of these in individuals and the players themselves as far as business wise so um as we play this, we're going to stop it. We're going to start it up again and we're going to stop it. But we're going to break down this video. But I definitely wanted to get this message out there to you guys because when it comes to a more positive message like this, um, this is really not something that you're going to see on your timeline. You know, we, we'll, we'll get all of the, the crazy messages and the crazy videos. This, this positivity is, is hard to come by. So I just wanted to put that out there um, just so we can get this out to especially a lot of you guys who were in that live chat when we were speaking on that those issues with king von and his untimely passing but let's go ahead and get to the video so we can start breaking down uh what john gabbana um has to give to his fans what's up y'all it's your boy john gabbana the one and only bayside boy now look i know a lot of y'all know me already feel like you know me already knew me as boot gang you feel me? Whole lot of, yeah, okay. And I usually don't go on the internet and talk about shit no more because that's just not my forte. But I'm gonna go ahead and make an exception today and we gonna talk because I feel like we have a lot of shit that we need to discuss that we ain't talk about yet. You know, a lot of unfinished, okay. So a lot of y'all may be mad a lot of y'all may be happy. Me, honestly, I personally don't give a fuck. I'm going to do me regardless, right? But, riddle me this. If I still, if I had that same mindset that I did three years ago, where would I be right now? Let's think about it. Okay. Damn. Boom, gang, whole lot of, okay. 
jail. That's all I was doing. That's all I was going, jail. And when I was going to jail, what was everybody who claimed now that they supporting? What was it? I ain't received not one letter. Not one. Not nothing on my books. Nigga, I was in that bit. Okay. But y'all support that. Okay. Y'all want me to okay. Damn. Okay. Back and forth to jail, back and forth. Okay. I'm, that was in California. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. I don't even I'm not even from California, but I kept I went to jail more in California than I've been in my own city and own state. But okay. Okay. And then when you catch the same charges, when the same charges rack up, if anybody know jail, it don't matter. It could be something little. You keep going to jail, you keep going to jail. It's going to rack up. I'm already a felon. Okay. I'm a felon now. But why? Because I was trying to be so, so much of that, that y'all wanted. Me. Like I said, we're going to pause it right there because we're going to break this video down in segments. Um. The first thing that this guy is breaking down is obviously, I mean, just by looking at his appearance, he's, he's changed. Um, his mindset, like we, we know this guy for being wild, crazy, aggressive, doing wild things. A lot of the things he did for the gram. The one thing he's basically trying to, to get out to you guys is that doing stuff, I mean, obviously as fans, and like I said, this can correlate to basketball as well. I mean... His career, he did a lot of things in his career for the views, for the gram. That's what he did. His whole career was based off of doing wild and crazy things where he was risking his life, where he was risking his his freedom all for views. And this is what the fans, this is what you guys, all right, for your entertainment purposes, because these are the types of videos that you guys want to click on. This is what you guys wanted to see. He was doing all of these things for views. For the little bit of money that he might have earned doing it, he was doing it for you guys. That's what you guys want to see. Again, the same way I correlate this to 90s basketball. Again, a lot of those players in the 90s, yeah, they made a lot of bad business moves. They made a lot of dumb decisions. All for what? All for the betterment of the team or all for the betterment of giving you guys better entertainment on the TV. All right. You know, you, you guys, especially you 90s fans and you 80s fans, you guys say, oh, we want to see one player on a team for his whole career. We want to see him get it the hard way. But but in doing that, you sacrifice a lot. In, in giving you guys what you want, they sacrificing money. They sacrificing business moves. They sacrificing themselves. All right. They, they're allowing team owners to put them in bad contracts for a long period of time. And then even when they outplay those contracts, as we saw with Scottie Pippen in the 90s, even when they outplay the value of those contracts, those owners were never willing to go back to the negotiation table and say, look, because of this, we're going to renegotiate in good faith and give you what you actually worth. That never happened. And, and, and so the same thing with him. I mean, like I said, this translation, this, this, this what he's talking about can translate to anything in life. And it's always about evolving and getting better, learning, evolving. And doing things, not just following what you guys want to see. Not just, because again, he had a lot of fans clicking on his videos because they wanted to see those boot gang videos. The same with 90s basketball, you guys wanted to see one player stay on the same team for 20 years. Stay in, y'all didn't care about his bad contract or what these players were actually risking or giving up. Y'all just wanted to see a certain type of basketball that y'all were used to seeing. All right. And and now players are starting to sit back and say, hold on, why why are we doing this? Why are we sacrificing so much? Why why do we got to do that? You know, but hold on, we're going to get to the video because, again, this is a slow breakdown. This is a slow ether because it, this is all about the evolution, not just a, a game of basketball, but the evolution of just life in general. This is how you grow and get better. I know CJ in the live chat, you, you, you spoke a lot about these guys in the hood. It's hard to get away from it. This is a perfect example. This is a perfect example, a systematic a breakdown of how you get away from that. And he's he's showing you right here. This is a guy who was in it, he found his way out of it. Let's go ahead and get back to the video, though. Stepping out my way and give y'all what y'all wanted, put me in predicaments that I was uncomfortable in. I had to deal with that myself. 
Y'all ain't y'all weren't there for me. But y'all claim that y'all support that. Okay, who you trying to fool? Okay. Okay. Drugs. I was introduced to drugs that I was taking. I was consuming. So let's say if I if I still stayed in the same mindset I did three years ago, where would I be at right now? Right today, where would I be at? If I was still boom gang, whole lot of gangs, where would I be at right now? The route that I was going, where would I be at? Would y'all still be supporting me? Would y'all still be having my back? No, I wasn't even getting no motherfucking money off that shit. Just views, likes, and comments, nigga. What that's gonna do for me? Not a goddamn thing. Now, okay, I'm 21. I'm, a, I'm 24 now, but I was 21 when it started. 2021. So I had a fucked up mindset. And plus, my life was. You feel me? That ain't got nothing to do with it. Cause life is life. My life is my life. Oh well. I live how I live. If this is the, if this is what's given to me, if this is the hand that's given to me, I'ma play it however. Now I feel accordingly. You feel me? Okay. But everybody say, ah, oh, oh, that shit was lit. That shit was lit. But y'all wasn't going through the motherfucking shit that I was going through. I was going through that shit by my motherfucking self. And everybody else who was around me like, damn, this nigga falling. This nigga dying. Y'all want to talk all that? And I seen shit on the internet. It's still on there. The fall off of, the fall off of, the downfall of. The downfall of the this. But now that I don't wanna I grew out of that and I don't wanna be that person no more. Now everybody say they want him back. Why? For me, so I can suffer? For y'all fool. Y'all wasn't supporting me for real. Y'all was laughing at me. And I know the difference from being laughed at and being laughed with. You feel me? I know the difference. Laughing with you or laughing at you. I know the motherfucking difference. I ain't no fool. Y'all was laughing at me. See? See, and I wanted to pause it right there just to, again, break it down, man. And dude, again, like you said, he, he he's just, he's basically letting you guys know that, look, you know, th those videos was all fun and games. I mean, from the viewer side of it, we, from the, for the entertainment value, we didn't care what he was risking to create those videos. All, all we, we didn't even care what he was earning. As he told you right there, he didn't make any money off those videos. And I believe that because it's going to be hard to monetize those types of videos. It's going to be hard to get sponsors to back those types of videos. He was just basically doing it for, for the fans. That's what y'all wanted to see. It's, and so I think that's the message he's getting across. Um, and, and, and it doesn't do at the end of the day he gets nothing out of it it makes his life no better it only costs him time money and freedom and, and again as I correlate this to basketball when we when we compare when we look at this situation uh, like with Scottie Pippen the man Scottie Pippen signed a, a, a long term terrible contract with the Bulls just so he can stay with one team for the majority of a certain decade right not only did he give that team everything he had not only did he help that team get six championships, what 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 did what did we give him back in return? You know, as, as fans, fans didn't fans didn't voice to the organization to, to pay this man so we can keep him in Chicago. They didn't do that. The fans didn't call for the GM to get fired when they when he didn't want to keep this team together to keep that run going. Um, they ended up laughing him out of Chicago. Just like with him. He made all those videos just for the entertainment value, just so we could get a good laugh. But when he was sitting in that jail cell, when he was going through those tough times, none of those supporters stepped in and helped him out. None of those supporters bonded him out. You see, and that's what I mean. That's why I say we can correlate this to basketball and how you have to evolve on your own. You have to evolve on your own because no matter what field you're in, no matter what you're doing in life, you we got to we got to break away from doing stuff for, based on what y'all want to see. We, we got to break away from doing what's traditional. We got to we, what we got to do is we got to start paving our own lanes. We got to start finding finding new ways to create our own new waves. All right. 
And, and that's all we got to do. And this is you know, just like basketball's evolved and players are more business savvy. This man is evolving. He's now becoming more business savvy as well. And, and, I, and I think that's the number one reason why the NBA is different. This is the number one reason why this man is evolving. He, he can't he can't do things predicated based off of what y'all always want what what we as fans what 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 we as viewers um want is not always to the benefit of them so when we look at 90s basketball it, it would be great it would be great and perfect for us to say stay with one team for your whole career do it the hard way get it out the mud that's what we want to see but is that what's best for the players themselves? Are, are we allowing the players to maximize their net worth? Are we allowing them to build the most generational wealth as possible by getting their worth from the team, from the organization? Are we holding the organization to the highest standards of saying, look, you're gonna have to start playing these athletes. You're gonna have to start paying them their worth. All right, well, we're not doing that. We don't do that. We don't. We, we all we want is we want people to do things for our entertainment value. We don't want them to. We don't honestly. We don't want people to do what's best uh, for them. It's a selfish mindset, and it's not just with him because he's just talking about his fans. It's we see it in the NBA. They they don't want they don't people don't want to see LeBron play strictly for building up his own net worth. They don't want to see him play for that. They want to see him play for their entertainment value. They want him to sacrifice his dollars, sacrifice his career, make less money so that they can get a better entertainment product. But these are the same people who these are the same people who if if you work at this hospital, if the next hospital offers you a 25 to 30 percent raise, you're going to leave. You're going to walk out that door and you're going to take the next best job, regardless of how good this company treated you. Regardless of, of what benefit you have, if the next job comes and offers you the most money, you're going to leave. You have no loyalty there. But you expect everybody else to have that same type of loyalty in their jobs. Because at the end of the day, we're talking about jobs here. We're talking about entertainment. And that's all it is. Start holding people to the same standard of how you would act if you were presented with a better business situation. Or if you were presented with a life life turning events like he was presented with. Like I said, this can this can go with anything, whether it's in gang culture and you're trying to get out of gangs and you're trying to build up a better life. This video can help you regardless of what you're trying to get out of. And he, it's just a perfect example because we watched this man literally tear himself down to rock bottom. And now he's explaining to you how he got out of it. We're going to get back to the video. though. I strengthened my mind. You feel me? I grew with, from within. From how I think, I grew from all that. But y'all trying to bring me back to that same mother so I could go through that shit again? So I could be in that jail system when I got a two-year-old son to raise? Who are y'all trying to play? Hmm? Okay. Okay. I speak the truth. Y'all not fooling nobody. But then again, See, I stopped at the peak. I stopped like mid, probably like beginning 2018. I stopped all that shit. Because I knew it was time. If I kept going that same route, I knew where I was headed. And I knew that was that I knew that really wasn't even me from the from the beginning. See, I had a plan from the start. It was all a plan. But me being in the situation that I was in when I was in Florida, Miami, when it all started, I got the call like, hey, let me fight. You know, we want to do business out. We want to do business with y'all here in Cali. So I took that. I seen it. Oh, the bitch, I was sleeping in the motherfucking bathroom. I was sleeping in the bathroom, breaking the houses and shit. I was sleeping in stairwells and shit. You feel me? I was going through all that shit, and that's nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's I don't want to put that and then make niggas feel sorry for me, cause I don't want no sympathy. You know what I'm saying? My life is my life. That's what I gotta go through. Oh well, so be it. 
I'm going to find a way to get past it. I'm going to find a way to get over that hill. I'm going to find a way. You feel me? But I was going through all that shit. So then when I get that call from Cali, 21 years old, bitch, I'm out. Took that. You feel me? Took that. Nah. I was being shitted on. I was being walked all over. You feel me? That was me. I was being walked all over. Now nah, I'm walking over niggas. Now nah, I'm doing the I'm walking over motherfuckers. You feel me? Now nah, I'm getting all the money. And it's crazy because how I was making my money, it wasn't even from the views and likes nigga. It's from all the the promo. What was I doing? The paidclub.org promo. You feel me? That's how I was making money. That's how I all I ever made money was just promo. And I'm getting all these millions of views, so either I'm doing something wrong or I got the wrong management team. And you know, I don't know this shit. All I know is the gram, nigga. That's all I know. You feel me? And everybody's sitting here thinking like, oh, this nigga rich, this nigga. Nah, you feel me? They up front me, okay, a uh, 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 hundred grand. I got, I got what? Four million followers. You feel me what I'm saying? So, with that honey, bitch, that's gone. I'm 21 years old. I don't know money. I ain't never had no money, nigga. Nigga, that's gone. And we ain't making that back. The business, I ain't getting no businesses because they like, oh, this nigga is wild. We can't have this nigga on our team. He is going to fuck shit up. He ain't smart in the head. He ain't right. You feel me? So, I'm sitting here just doing all this dumb shit, but I'm like, damn. I'm getting millions of views. I got millions of followers, 100,000 likes, but I ain't really touching no money like that. So, like I say, either I'm doing the wrong thing or I got the wrong management team. I'm, something's wrong. Something's fucked up in this industry. Something's going on. You feel me? But, oh, that's a side. I'm just trying to say, I was who I was. I am who I am. See, this is what it is. You feel me? Man, I like what he, I like what he was saying right there, especially about the money. Because what we hear a lot, man, this is this is the sad part about it, man. When we get in these debates, and the, the sadder part about it is that this this undertone and this underlying message about money usually comes from older people who should know better. But what they they say that they say that these athletes really athletes are just entertainers because these sports are just entertainment. So I'm going to say these entertainers. They say they should they should take less money. They say that these athletes should. Not get their full value so they can stay on a certain team. Keep, keep the overall league competitive. And as Boot, as Boot Gang just told you, his, his management team was obviously collecting all the money. But he's getting millions of views and he's seeing pennies on the dollar. Right? So he knows. So what happens is you start becoming aware. Of your, when you start becoming aware of your own value, then you start to see that you're getting cheated. And so with regards to the NBA... NBA players started becoming aware of their own value. And once they started seeing that they were getting cheated, like what he said, as opposed to getting stepped on, they start doing the stepping on. So when we look at guys like Anthony Davis and LeBron James and all of these guys with these super contracts, all these guys taking these one-in-one -one deals so that every two years they can maximize and re-up and get the most value possible, that's called. that's when you got the power now. They getting the most money that they allowed to get based on the current CBA. That's what you're supposed to do. That's called maximizing your money. That's called stepping on. And as he said right there, pe people don't like to see, people don't like that feeling when you had a power now. See, the people in this league now, they don't like it when LeBron James has the power. And it's sad, it's unfortunate that the older people, our older generation, they don't like it. They don't see the business, the 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 the, the, the business savviness of the, of his of these moves. They only care about the the product. So these old heads telling you to take less money just for their entertainment. They just like boot gangs fans. They just like boot gangs fans who saying, regardless of what it costs you to make these videos, we want to see you put out these videos. We don't care if you going to jail. We don't care if you sacrificing your freedom. We don't care if you losing money. We want you to continue doing what you're doing for the entertainment value. And the same thing translates into the NBA. 
these old these older people it's the older people saying this stuff it's the older people pushing this pathetic narrative they want you guys young players in the NBA now they want you guys to stay on one team take less money so the organization organization can build around you but you, but the only thing that happens when you take less money if you a star player in this league is you put more money in the pockets of them owners you put more money in the pockets of the NBA and you doing nothing for yourself and just like when he said he got a hundred thousand dollars to a lot of people, $100,000 is a lot of money. But he showed you right there, if you don't know what to do with it, it can go just like that. And at the end of the day, 100000 is not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money at all. All right? Right? But to people like these older people in the 90s who didn't understand their wealth, who didn't understand generational wealth, who didn't understand how to build your own brand, what well, to those people... $100,000 is a lot of money. To those people, they're going to tell you to be content with that minimal amount of money. Oh, oh, I can live off that because they, because based on their lifestyle of being broke, busted, and disgusted, 100000 is a lot to them and they can manage it. They expect you to be able to do the same thing and live that same broke, busted, and disgusted lifestyle. Again, don't limit yourself. Again, it, there's some things, especially with the older generation, that you can listen to, but there's a lot of things that you want to avoid listening to especially when it comes to stuff like this and and it and, 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 and that that toxic that toxic energy it comes out and you can hear it when we talk about things like the NBA today and, and the way the players are taking over the way the players are understanding their value the way the players are getting all of this money the way the players are teaming up on the, on their own because when these players team up on their own they don't just win championships they build up their own brand all right you build up your own, you, you, you're building your, your value. These championships is more than just about collecting accolades. It's about building legacy. And, and you, and you don't, guys don't, you don't understand what these championships do to a player's brand awareness and brand value outside of the NBA. When we look at a guy like Caruso on the Lakers now, this, this man is getting fame and popularity, brand and marketing deals all over the place just because he's playing on a championship Laker team. Just because he's playing on a team with Anthony Davis and LeBron James teamed up on it. And I guarantee you he's not going nowhere no time soon. Not willingly because he understands the value of that brand, of the value of what LeBron James is doing. Not just for that team, but for the entire NBA. And he's, and he's profiting off of it. Come on, man. we gotta start thinking better. Especially if we young. We got to start thinking better. We got to start thinking like this. All right, because that molded thinking, the way the way he's evolved is the same way basketball's evolved and the way players also started to recognize what they need to change. We, as, as, you know, we cannot do stuff based on what other people expect of us. That's not going to get you nowhere but leave you in the same loop and circle that they in. All right, if you want to get better, if you want to, the, the goal is to see, to get better than the next generation. That's the goal, to be better than the next generation. All right. And you only get better than the next generation by doing it better than the past generation. So with regards to the NBA, I'm going to tell every NBA player that's doing it right now, continue to team up. Continue to create super teams. Continue to get championships your way. Don't do it they way because when you do it they way, then you have a whole bunch of players who are out of the league who are filing bankruptcy they five years out, who don't have no money. They don't know how to manage the little money that they did make, and they put themselves in a bad financial situation all because they wanted to give you a better product, a better, a better basketball game, better entertainment because it was better for you. So now you guys, while you guys are sitting there talking about how entertaining the 90s basketball was ain't none of you guys came together and put together a fund to help all of these broke NBA players who's, who've lost all of that wealth all right because you guys are the ones that told them to sacrifice their money you guys were the ones that said this is the right way to do it even though there was free agency it's about evolving it's about getting better let's finish this video like the whole the whole get go with the, the whole rundown of everything, like the whole start of everything. First off, it was just for me to get, uh, just for me to get in the dough, to get a fan base, to get known, and then spit my, be me, put my music out there. Cause I was putting my music out there from the start. 
I was putting my music out there. But nobody ain't know who I was. Nobody was supporting me. Nobody ain't fuck with me. Nobody ain't care about me. You feel me? So I did what I had to do that I felt like I had to do that was best for me for me to get out there and put myself in a better position. Because I ain't had nothing. You feel what I'm saying? Now that when I get in there, I let it take over me, over my mind. Because everybody said I couldn't, but I just showed everybody I can. So now that it worked, it went, it took over me. It controlled me. And it it was taking me down the path of destruction. But I woke up out of it. I woke up. I woke up and like, oh, John, you losing yourself, boy. Wake up, my nigga. You gone, my nigga. And now that I changed everything, now that I'm woke, motherfuckers trying to bring me back. I was like, oh, what? I ain't stupid. You feel me? But I'm patient with everything. You feel me? I'm very patient with everything. You know, I made a lot of choices that I probably shouldn't have made. I've done a lot of things I probably shouldn't have done. It is what it is. I'm 24 years old. Two, four, 24. I'm 24 years old. I'm still young. I got a long life to live. We all make mistakes. Niggas trying to act like they don't make mistakes, like they perfect and shit. Bitch, I know you make mistakes. I know you ain't perfect. You ain't fooling nobody. We all do. We live and we learn. The best teacher is experience. Now I got experience under my belt. I got a lot of it. And I don't got no belt on. But experience is still under it. You feel me? We live. And we learn. We all gonna make mistakes. Nobody perfect. But everybody trying to hold me up to a such high standards and shit. Hold me back from who I really am and who I wanna become and who I deserve to become. And take try to take from me from what I know that I deserve and what I'm worth. Trying to belittle me. Take me out my character. Why? Why me? I know I'm better than that. I know who I am. Nigga, I'm John Capone, nigga. Okay. Hey, man, there we have it right there. The John Gabbana, man, just a message to the fans. Message to the fans. There's primarily a message to the fans that want to see Boom Gang come back. And basically, he's just letting you know it ain't happening. It, 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 again, it's not happening. For him, it's not worth it. Going back to bo- going back to being Boom Gang means giving up money, giving up net worth, giving up freedom, p- potentially putting taking him away from his son this is remember that's what we want to see you know for the views that's what we want to see for the views again and this is what i say it correlates to basketball because when we look at basketball we we look at we watching it for the entertainment value so we always want to see there's a certain way we want to see it to make our eyes happy to make us happy and i I talk to all these especially 90s fans and, and older people from the 80s and 90s and, and what are they always saying? They always talking about how LeBron James is 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 is, is destroying the game, and, and, and how these players are switching up, how the game is soft. And these these players don't want to do it the hard way. Well, you know what? Doing it the hard way means you, means you only want to see it done the hard way for your entertainment value. You you saying it, you don't care about the what they have to sacrifice to do it the hard way. For for LeBron James to stay in Cleveland and do it the hard way, you don't care about him moving out to LA to join the Lakers for all of the stuff that he's doing off the court with the business ventures and moves that he's making off the court. Y'all only care about the entertainment value that you see on the court. Y'all only, y'all only understand that, oh, he's making a few million dollars. He's making millions of dollars in the NBA, so he should be able to sacrifice money for my entertainment value. That's what y'all basically saying. When y'all talk about all of these players in the NBA making all this money, oh, they should, they should only be able to take 10 million and be happy. I can live off 10 million. They should be able to. 
we be thinking so small minded we think so small minded and, and john gabbana is a perfect example of how small minded he used to think because he wanted to do things for entertainment for for the fans all right the nba players used to because they wanted to do things for the fans. They wanted to do things that way. Ma Magic Johnson signed a 25 year contract for $25 million. That's a million dollars a year. I mean, wh wh I mean, wh where was one of the older people there to tell him that's a terrible idea? Get your full value. So, so, so if we understand now that Magic Johnson and Scottie Pippen, even Michael Jordan's first contract, if we understand now that the, all those players signed terrible deals, why the hell are y'all trying to convince players of this era to do things the same way, the same stupid way that those players were doing it in the 90s? That's left a lot of those players completely broke. That same way that they did it in the 90s, for your entertainment value, you want players of the today to sacrifice that money to do it to 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 play a game the way y'all want to see it played this is completely ridiculous man y'all and, and so i kind of understand why some of these kids is turned on the way not listening to their parents because at the end of the day man we got to be better we got to be better than that all right this is this is called this is called understanding your financial wealth um Understanding financial responsibility, all of these things going. These are the things that they don't teach in school. These are the things that you know in the '90s they didn't. Nobody knew nothing about understanding credit worthiness and financial wealth and understanding things of that nature. Nobody understood that. Y'all still don't understand it, and I know y'all still don't understand it because y'all telling players to do the same things that the '90s players were doing that left them in bad financial situations. So I appreciate John Gabbana for showing the fact that he's grown, not just as a person, but as a businessman. He understands his value and he's not going to let anybody take away from that value, regardless of what the fans might want to see. This man has millions of, of followers and he's telling all of his followers, I'm not going back to that because at the end of the day, he knows it's not worth his time or money to do so. And I implore all NBA players to feel the same way. Do not go back to how they were doing things in the 90s. Do not do that at all. I don't care what they say. I don't care if they say it's, it's bad for the game or there's no parity or there's no competition. Who cares? Right? Because if, at the end of the day, if there's no parity or competition, what we need to tell the NBA do is go get more young young players and start paying them on put these guys on other teams to make them other teams better. We're going to give more people some financial freedom All right, and with, with that NBA money. So, again, it's just a video I wanted to give to you guys. Like I said... It can relate to anything that you're dealing with. If you're trying to evolve and make a change, if you're in the streets and you're trying to get out, he's a perfect example. All right. If you made some bad business decisions in the past and you're trying to evolve and get better, he's a good example. And, if, and again, in basketball, before you before you sign a stupid contract, think about your value. Think about your value. Discuss your value. Discuss your brand awareness. Discuss your net worth. Discuss all of those things. All of that comes into play. All right. But that's all we wanted to touch on today, man. It's a great video. Again, salute to John Gabbana. I don't even like I don't even like calling him boot gang no more. I like calling him by his real name because the man is involved. Um, salute to him for changing his life. Uh, salute, salute for understanding your value. Salute for just letting your fans know this is not something i'm going back to because it's not worth it and the fans ain't gonna support you if things go left just like in the nba the fans ain't gonna the fans ain't gonna financially support you if things go left we, we got a perfect example of that with delante west delante things went left for delante west things went way left for delante west and did a, a not a, not one single fan or person stepped in to help get him back on his feet then nobody step in and help them. So you know. So in NBA, what the one thing that you know for certain is that things go left. If your money, if you lose all that money and it's not there, we one thing we know is all these, all of these viewers, all of the fans watching, they ain't gonna be the ones to help you. They're gonna laugh at you when they see you sitting on the street begging for money, just like they did with Delonte West. And 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 as I've said before, it's sad that it took a, a team owner like Mark Cuban to go pull them up. 
by his bootstraps to help him out to get him to get back on his feet. It's sad that it took that. A fan didn't do it. A player didn't do it. But but that just tells you what fans why that's how that tells you right there how much fans actually care. They don't. They just want to. We want to see things for entertainment value. That's me included. We only we we watch the game of basketball for entertainment. All right, but at the same time, y'all got to be smarter too. And I'm not going to tell an NBA player to do something that I wouldn't do. Because just like you with your nine to five job, just like you guys would switch and go to the next job that pays more money. When it, if it came, if you had the opportunity, I expect these players to get their max, their max value as well. But hey, it's been FYF Sports Man. Been another great video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Especially if you like the video, man. We wanted to touch on this real quick. John Gabbana with a big life change. That's what we wanted to present today, man. So salute to him for that. Hey, but it's FYF Sports Man. Been another great video. We'll be back with more. Uh, we got giveaway news coming soon. Uh, hopefully, we're able to get our hands on another PS5. I would love to do one more PS5 giveaway. I think we've given away three or four so far. I can't remember. So salute to all the winners, man. Um, one of our winners, you still need you still need to check in with us to claim your prize. We got Jade, Mar Jade Marcel. You need to check in with us to claim your prize. You still haven't claimed it yet. Um, so I'm a, I'll just give you the deadline. Well, we'll say by November 10th. If you don't claim it by November 10th, then we'll be reopening that giveaway and we'll be giving it away to another subscriber. So make sure you hit us up in our email business at fyfsports.com to claim your prize. Everyone else out there, I know a couple of you guys are still waiting on your gift cards. I think it's maybe only one person. That's all going to be coming this week. So again, salute to everybody that's been supporting the channel uh, and, and everybody that's won one of our giveaways. But it's been FYF Sports, another great video, and we out.